Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and I'm very excited to be here inside the boardroom of Hunters and Frank Cow uh, with Jim Freeman, of course, no stranger to this channel, Sean Crowley and Anna Lopez. I mean, three absolutely incredible uh, people that have had such a profound impact of Cuban cigars. Uh, we are here to discuss one of their most recent and newest regional releases. Uh, of course, Hunters and Frank Cow is the exclusive importer of Cuban cigars uh, into the UK market, uh, probably uh, one, if not the oldest of all of the distributors still in business. Uh, and uh, certainly one of the most important. And so uh, their regional releases are some of the most uh, widely anticipated uh, of all the regional releases every single year. And so we have the privilege today smoking the 2021 uh, regional release here for the first time in the boardroom of Hunters and Frank with Gemma, Sean and Anna. So what a, what a privilege. It's a real hard work for me today. <laughs> well, it's very nice to have you here again, yeah, Kirby. Thank you. thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, we're very excited that we're going to do this first tasting. Um, we have here a prototype box of our 2021 regional edition, which we have um, not yet started to receive in any volume, but we're hoping that we will, and we will release it later this year, so towards the end of 2023. Um, it's called the Paul Araniaga 47. It's a Julieta number no. two, otherwise known as a Churchill cigar, so 47 ring gauge and seven inches long. It's the first time we have um, asked for a regional edition in a cabinet of 50. It's amazing. And we specifically chose this layout of the three rows um, because we thought it would be an interesting presentation. Um, it's in line with other, other Paul Araniaga regional edition presentations that we've done with the class box. Mm. And it's the fourth Paul Araniaga um, that we've asked for from Cuba. Yeah, you've really just been going from strength to strength, you know, with the regionals. I mean, the last three or four, of course, uh, releases that I've kind of, you know, been able to enjoy as, you know, someone, you know, really kind of smoking, collecting. I mean, the, you know, what was it, La Reina, incredible. <laughs> the 225th before that, right? The 230th most recently. I mean, a proper cigar. That's a great And here cigar. we are, you have us, I mean, it's a real gift uh, to uh, cigar connoisseurs, a cab of 50 of a proper Churchill cigar. I mean, it's really quite exciting. Well, it is, and we had noticed in the market that, that there are less products available in cabinets of 50 now, and yet smokers were asking us for cabs of 50. So we might have the odd box in our house reserve, but there aren't that many lines in the standard production that are produced in 50, and it's very unusual to see a, a speciality, what mm -hmm. we would call a speciality produced in a 50. Um, and also, we quite like to take a, a little risk every now and again. Yeah. So this this is well, a I risk, think, I think. I think it's, uh, um, again, as if you look back at all our regionals or some of our regionals, we try to um, reintroduce sizes that uh, were, you know, much more popular in the past. And the Churchill size is a classic size and very popular. But in recent years, it hasn't, uh, uh, um, it's waned a little bit as more thicker ring gauges yeah. and, you know, uh, cigars uh, have come out. And the Churchill size is is is, is, a, is a classic size, cigar. and uh, and uh, uh, we thought that uh, um, as we had done in the past, like with the Lorena as well, where Gemma took the risk with the yeah. Legito number no. one, a thin, yeah. slender uh, regional edition, which um, we had never done before, proved to be a, an absolute success. And indeed, in in our uh, 2020, I think three or two, I'm not sure because they've yeah. stopped one yeah. of the years now. But indeed, we'll be looking back and we uh, perhaps looking at a Cervantes size or something mm -hmm. that, well, again, very little is being produced at the moment. So we're really excited. Yeah. About What's that. interesting about the regional uh, concept uh, is the ability to, you know, experiment, play around with, you know, sizes and presentations and formats that are outside of the Havanos' core portfolio. And one of the things that I appreciate so much, and I think that's really unique to Cuban tobacco, is its collectability. Uh, and the connoisseurship uh, amongst the smokers. And I really see the regional program as doing so much to embellish that and indulge true connoisseurs of Cuban tobacco into interesting formats that would otherwise not be available. And we've been very conscious of that. I mean, you know, the, the limit on the quantity you can have produced is as high as you wish to go. Okay. So it is tempting to ask for <laughs> hundreds yeah. of thousands yes. or something. But actually, the, the feedback we've always had from our customers is we don't want too many boxes of this to exist. So I think this is one of 
1,500 boxes. Really? That's it. Wow. There'll only be 1,500 boxes of that Goodness ever gracious. produced. And, and that, for me, is, is exciting in itself. It and makes this, it. this presentation in particular, I mean, it's, even if it's in 50, but it's not the usual 50 that is in the market because usually it's a slight box. Mm -hmm. And this one, I remember only to have that in Trinidad in 50s. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very particular presentation of the 50 with the rows and so that for the aging process is very interesting because give to the cigar something special about the cedar and the mm -hmm. uh, everything that is developing inside of that box will be very, very interesting for Because the there's more cigars, so it ages in a slightly different way. No, because way. of the rows. Between yeah. rows, you have cedar, and yeah. you have all those cigars just exchanging flavor with the cedar between them. It's something interesting what is happening inside of box of 50. I mean, it's really uh, something to behold. And I say, you know, the only thing better than the box of 25 is a cab of 50. Uh, and, <laughs> With you, on that. you know, I find that, you know, the moment I'm one or two cigars into a box of 25, I already feel like I'm halfway through. Oh, no. But at least with the cab of 50, you can smoke through it a little bit uh, more, more until you get to that point <laughs> at which, you know, you are reaching into that box with hesitation. Um, and, you know, something this incredible, I mean, it's, you're hard-pressed even to, to smoke one because, I mean, the presentation, I mean, those 230s are rolled so beautifully. I mean, the wrappers on those are just pristine. And I open those boxes sometimes uh, just to look at how beautiful. I love that band as well. Oh, I mean, the band, the green band. band. I mean, yeah, it's wonderful. Or the black band's black. Black and white right? band. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the Ramonis do do a green band for, for limited editions, an old band, but we use the old black and white one yeah. because yeah. we found the history of the private stock. But that's yeah. not for me to talk that's about. Yeah. I think we should another yeah. time. Yeah. Shall we see them? I haven't Shall seen we this see yet. Them? Um, well, would you like me to show the yes, box? Yes, please. Well, well, here's the box. <laughs> it's cabinet of 50 with a clasp. Um, Paul Laranyaga, 50 Laranyaga 47s. Mm. And then that's the inside lid. Wow. That's amazing, May I? Of course yeah, you can. Uh, thank you. Look at this. Thank you. Now, talk to me a little bit about this band. So this is Exclusivo Reina Udo, Uni, Unido. My Spanish is terrible despite being no, 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 it's not uh, having a, a, a Latin wife uh, and I, bilingual children. Please, <laughs> please don't, don't look at me for help. Well, okay. the Exclusivo Reino Unido, Reino Unido is the translation into Spanish of United Kingdom. Yeah. So that means Reino Unido. And the Reino Unido was used in the uh, regional editions uh, for the United Kingdom between... 2007 and 2010. We well, changed we changed 2011 to, to the Grand Bretagne. Grand Bretagne, which is more Great Britain. But uh, we don't know why we have come back to the Reino Unido. Probably from Cuba side, they they think that it's yeah. better to celebrate yeah, yeah, yeah. the Reino Unido. <laughs> but they want to make us work harder with 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 the translation. So, uh. well, one of the things I find interesting again, Hunters and Francao has such a rich uh, history within Cuban tobacco. I mean, how many years has, you know, your family and this company been trading, Gemma? Well, the company was founded in 1790, not under the name Hunter St. Frank Howe, but um, the original business was founded in 1790. Uh, my family got involved in cigars in the, in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been involved with Cuba since the early 1900s, where we were lucky enough to become the, the owners for a few years of the H. Upman factory mm. in Havana. Um, and, and that's a relationship that has, I mean, we've been the distributor for H. Upman one way or the other for over 100 years. It's amazing. Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting history. But it, I mean, one of the things I appreciate is, again, you know, how Hunters and Frank Cow is able to really, you know, reach back into, you know, its history to pull out these interesting elements yes. and to pull them forward Yes. into the current production. So although this is uh, a new release, it still has these echoes of, of quality of craftsmanship, of tradition uh, of Cuban tobacco. Well, and we were, we were very lucky. I always remember Simon Chase telling me when he joined the company in the 1970s that the first question he asked was, can I have all the books, please? Mm. <laughs> there weren't any. There was no literature. And he became, as well as a marketing director and, a, and an expert at legislation and everything else he did, he became a historian. Yeah. 
yeah. he was by nature a historian and he gathered great deals of material in the office and over the years would research and learn and I think that is a culture that he embedded in all of us yeah. um, and then when Anna and Simon were working together when Anna was the director of marketing at Habanos you've also always had an interest in the history of cigars oh yes, yes. and and Simon and Anna together you know was a was quite a an amazing coming together of of two minds but two people that really then Anna goes on to this day doing it but hugely respect the tradition and the history yeah and I think carrying that echo forward is part of our our responsibility yeah. and our job and also there were so many brilliant things done many, many, many years ago. And to be lucky enough to have a file or a folder or be able to go through old labels or the portfolio of Ram and Ionis in the... I mean, it, it's just limitless information. It's knowing what to do with it and how to use it in a way that it's relevant yeah. to people today. And I, th I think that this is where the concept of the regional editions has really allowed, mm -hmm. you know, that expression. Uh, for us, particularly for Hans and Franco, for us to do, and because we had, we were lucky enough to have someone like Simon and, and Anna, who was our corporate director for a period of time in between, in between your uh, directorship at Habanos, was to combine that knowledge and come up with the creative creativity uh, to reflect a doff a doff of the caps, you would say, to pass, and that's why we always try and reflect something, uh, um, something old or something traditional in the regional editions that we do. Yeah. Um, and indeed, you know, the Paul Arenaga, oh my gosh, I'm going for it, Larenaga 47. <laughs> it's not the yeah, best pronunciation yeah. in the world, yeah. <laughs> and then I had agreed beforehand, listen, you take over all of that, but I can't just went for it there, but never mind. Uh, it's no different. I think you nailed you know. it. Yeah, I <laughs> nailed it. Thank you, Kirby, you're too kind. Um, so again, we were excited. Every time we get offered, uh, uh, you know, the regional editions are offered to the distributors, we really do. We, we, we sit around the table and it's like, right, what can we do? Let's look back, let's mm -hmm. research, let's see what, what's, yeah. you know, and it's really exciting when you find something like the private stock, you know, like the Ron Maloney private stock, which was a, you know, a, a name of Vitola back in the, uh, 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 the old range when Ron Maloney had much more than it, Vitola's in its portfolio than it, than it uh, does at the moment. And then to be able to relate that and even find an old cigar in the tray, it was, it's, it's exciting. So it really is a, a, a very, you know, it's a, a, a um, a project we love to embrace. And I think particular here in the United Kingdom, because the history and the tradition that is in this market, it becomes really, really interesting when we are creating a regional edition because always there is something in the market that attracts the attention. It's yeah. not only Hunter and Franco. Mm -hmm. The retailers also have been part of this journey of the regional edition with ideas, and, and proposals, and even being part of the testing. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is not just Hunter and Franco. No. It's just a teamwork also mm. with the retailer, which is even more exciting. And quite I often think... they'll have a box in their store yeah. that we've never seen. You know, we might not have been the importer at that time. So there are many retailers around that have cigars that we don't have documented or we didn't know existed, and you get another little bit of... And that the, the, one of the things that I think we've observed in this market over the years is if you can build a story that has genuine history and mm -hmm. provenance to yeah, it, and then you can combine that with, you know, working together with the industry to make the cigar that you all have mm -hmm. pictured in your mind, you end up with this lovely combination of a story, a nod to history, and a cigar that that can carry that kind that of weight. positive yeah. message and weight, or not positive message, yeah. but can carry that weight of history forward. Yeah. And I and I think that's you know, mm. as you said, the regional edition projects for us. I think every single one has its own story mm -hmm. and its own memory and its own visit to Cuba and its own tasting and its own yeah. everything. So it is, you know, looking over there at them, it's almost like looking at little children. Yeah. They, feel, they, feel like, they feel like they feel like people, all of yeah. them. They all have personalities. Yeah. But also the it's retail, you know, so, uh, we're lucky enough as well sometimes to be able to taste a blend or have an option of a blend or, or, or that the, the, uh, at the factory in Cuba. And if, the, if there are, are some of our customers yeah. with us, they join us. Yeah. 
and so it's, it really is a, a it becomes a, a, um, not just the cigars at Hunters yeah. and a Hunters and Franco sort of release. It's yeah. a it's a real sort Collective. of uh, UK yeah. kind of um, uh, industry um, yeah. feel to it. So well, it's incredible to me just the preeminence of the UK market. I mean, I really see it as you know not only producing the best cigars in the world, even within the Havana's portfolio, which are the best cigars in the world. But you've got the best retailers. You've got some of the best places in the world to smoke at these grand lounges that you find at the, the great hotels. You've got many of the most important retailers like Davidoff of London and the Sahakians and, you know, J.J. Fox and, you know, you know countless others. And collectively as a market, uh, the United Kingdom, you know, is so dynamic and so, um, you know, has such influence. Uh, on this product. Yeah, it's a privilege to be the distributor here. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's I mean, a, it, a it, lot it, of work, you know, to, 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 to keep it going forward because, I mean, year after year, I mean, incredible releases yeah. uh, and really, you know, fighting against, you know, you know, to maintain quality and to do something interesting well, and to fight energy, legislation. But legislation's yeah. a kicker. Legislation, you know, absolutely, that's, a, but, um, that's always there. There's a sort of, there's a, there's a momentum in this market that I think comes from having that many quality retailers with the sort of history that they have. And I always remember Edward saying to me years and years ago about St. James's, he said, every time someone says that they're going to open a shop on St. James's, I feel so happy because the more of us there are, the stronger the market becomes. And it was a sort of classic Edward remark of just flipping something on its head that somebody else might perceive as a negative yeah. into the most important thing is to build and build and build. Yeah. And, you know, right now, this market is in a really interesting position and, and it is thriving and the cigar community is strong and the demand is strong. And as you say, we have these venues with sampling lounges that people have invested significant amounts of money in and people are going to them and they're buying cigars and they're collecting cigars. And, it, you know, it's something we're very proud to be Absolutely. in a position to continue to support. Yeah. Mm. Well, the connoisseurship, you know, here in London it has to be amongst the, the greatest mm. in the world. I mean, there's consumption of Cuban cigars all over the world and there are certainly other markets where, you know, Cuban cigars are in demand. But the connoisseurship, the appreciation for that quality, the craftsmanship, the tradition mm. uh, in the UK market is so pronounced. And I think that in many ways, I mean, that kind of starts here at Hunters and Frank Cow, you know, probably in this boardroom with the tone that, you know, all of you set for how you approach the development of these incredible cigars. I think also, you know, the UK market, we're, we're very resilient. We saw, you know, when, when the smoking ban came in in 2009, I think it was. You know, there was, it was hard to see how, you know, it's different, particularly in, in the catering so yeah. sector where you used to be able to enjoy a cigar after dinner at your table and yeah. so on. And we don't, uh, we're not blessed with the greatest weather, uh, as, you, uh, <laughs> as you probably know, as Anna. We had some great <laughs> weather yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, we did. But what we found, <laughs> um, what's happened over the last 13, 14 years is, um, is the creation of the outdoor area, the, the, the terraces, mm -hmm. which are within the, the legal parameters of being able to enjoy a cigar. Um, and that has, that has really accelerated and people have invested because they, they, they want to accommodate the cigar smoker. They mm -hmm. want to attract, they want people to be able to sit and enjoy a cigar, yeah. banos, uh, and a drink. And that's what we've, we're finding in London, but not just in London, outside of London. Yeah. A lot of hotel, restaurants and everything are accommodating you know the Habano smoker, and and that is really encouraging over the years, and we and we saw that uh, from that that uh, quite you know potentially a big, big uh, uh, um, impact uh, within obviously the, yeah. the legal framework. People have can enjoy cigars, particularly well, I mean, in the UK. Again, the best places in the world to really smoke cigars. So let's talk a little bit about this particular this particular cigar. beauty. I mean, again, every year, I mean, there's a rotation of brands, right? And I know that the blending, the work that goes into, you know, the selection of the blend um, is, is incredible. Can you talk through that in terms of, you know, maybe, you know, the poor, uh, poor Laranya, 
you know, there I'm you making you sound good. I'll help you. I'll, <laughs> thank you. I'll give you some, yeah, I'll give you some yeah, lessons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's that G in the end. Uh, I just can't nail it. It's the end with the yeah. wobble over uh, the top. That's what I Let's call it the 47, sure. You know, <laughs> but so, I mean, the the prior release was a Ramon Ayones, the special, especially, what was it, the Private Stock 230. Private Stock 230. Um, it's a different brand than the Por La Raña. Uh, how much of this blend is a function of the history and just the characteristics that one would expect from this cigar? Where? And then how much of it is then also influenced by your palate and take on how you think this needs to smoke? Well, that's a very, very interesting question. And remind me, when we visited uh, recently Cuba and met the master blender, uh, Arnaldo Bishop, mm -hmm. who was a blender of precisely this brand, Por really? La Rañaga, for a long, long time. He started in the uh, as a master blender of the Por La Rañaga factory in 1958 mm -hmm. and went through that on, until 1998 when he moved to the Partagas factory. And he is part of the history of this brand. Um, i always very amazed by the job of the master blenders in Cuba. Uh, been working in the industry for so long time, I would say, <laughs> <laughs> little time, starting in 1984. Um, always has been impressed with the tradition and the passion of the people that work for the Cuban tobacco industry. And particularly the master blender play so much important role. Uh, and precisely in Por La Rañaga, there is a story about this because it was one of the first regional editions that we did here in this uh, market. And I remember we went to Cuba and tried the cigar mm -hmm. by the first time. And by coincidence or by the history of this market, we had a retailer that had a sample of cigars from 20 years ago. And we went to the factory, we taste the new blend against that old cigar. And I was so impressed. I mean, all of the people were impressed, but I was so, so impressed to find out that the blend was so consistent. Mm -hmm. And that is happened every time that we go to the factory and we uh, taste one cigar against other. I have the privilege of being part of the Comisión Nacional de Degustación. I mean, the commission that tasting new products mm -hmm. and so on in Cuba before the cigars will be released into the market. And I always been impressed mm -hmm. by the skill of the master blend because it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, in one cigar, you have different leaves that belong to different harvests, that belong to different farms. And to be able to maintain that consistent in the blend is even, is, is incredible, even incredible. For me, it's a treasure that the Cuban cigar industry have. And it's something that only can be uh, maintained in the way that is because of the passion that people put behind the, their work. It's, it's really incredible. And this, uh, Por La Rañaga, is different than Ramon Alones. This is light to medium. Mm -hmm. The Ramon Alones is full flavor. Mm. So we have changed now from full flavor to light to medium. But this cigar, because of the size, you will always find something else. It's not light to medium, it is. You will be, a, you will go through a journey of different uh, developing in this cigar that started very light, maybe, but you will see afterward, it will be totally different and you will be more impressed. Yeah. I've got a little bit of pepper though. I mean, it's it's got a slightly peppery taste, which I would expect. My draw is very good. An excellent draw. Yeah, no, a very good draw. And I like the color of this wrapper. It's a very sort of... It's a relatively young cigar. Yeah. I mean, we have received that as a, just a prototype. Yeah. When do you think these will have been rolled? I mean, I mean, are all the cigars that well, have we been have released? Here. We have the date on the, the box. Date on the box. Probably this year, I would have thought. Uh, well, that was at the end of 
2022. So right. in December 2022 yeah. was uh, three put in the box. Yeah. The baby. Mm -hmm. So it's still not. So they're still, they're still being not six We are still receiving. Yeah receiving a, a um, production. Yeah. So some months. will have 22 at the late 22, some the majority will have, will have 23, yes. yep. and so on. It's December 2022, it means that this was received here very, very recently. Mm -hmm. It's a cigar that according to the UK retailer, need rest, need to rest for a while in order to uh, start developing as mm -hmm. it should be. So we have, very young cigar, but it's still, it's really nice. It's really nice. Yes, well, I don't. But there was a tradition in the in the UK where the importer used to age the cigars for a couple of years, and even the retailer would age it before release. But I don't think we will get away with uh, putting these on hold for two years. Yeah. <laughs> for two years now, um, they'll, so, they'll uh, need to be aged in uh, you know the humidors of yeah, those we'll leave, fortunate enough to acquire. We'll a box. Leave the aging to the to the to the uh, the final. Well, and collectors do that for themselves yeah. now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that is that that role has almost passed on to the consumer. Yeah, well, I'm they, building a beautiful yeah. walk-in humidor just for this purpose. Wow, we're looking <laughs> forward to seeing that, Kirby. <laughs> but again, just sitting here smoking this, it does remind me. I can't. Before we started. Uh, um, industrially um, sampling these. I can't remember the last time I actually smoked a, a Churchill size, a Julieta yeah. Número Dos. I, 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 I simply can't. And obviously, I, I smoke a quite a fair few, um, um, but I can't remember the last time I smoked a Churchill. And it's just great to have that, even the feel of the cigar again. It's got a lovely balance yeah. in terms yeah. of yeah. the way it sits in your hand, a Churchill. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, when we entered the industry, the Churchill was 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 the the dawn, the, wasn't it? It was the absolutely, yeah. and there was there were many different varieties in those days. You had the Hoyo, you had the Punch, you had yeah. the Bolivar Gigantes, you had the Prince of Wales, you had the you know Mon up H Upman Monarchs. You had a wide variety, which yeah, yeah. In 1984, when I started, the Churchill was one of the main uh, vitolas. Yeah. I, I would say in all the main brands, mm. Churchill yeah. was present. Yeah. And today only we have uh, Julieta number two, I mean the Churchill size, in Romeo and Julieta Churchill and Coibe Splendidos. That's so Splendidos. have been reduced to the minimum. It's like it's out of fashion. Mm -hmm. That's why we are taking We're again back into fashion. <laughs> <laughs> there is this size that is very, very close to the UK market because yeah. the name of the Churchill, Churchill yes. of course, is very, very close to, and the even the, the idea of this size is also yeah. related to the unique yeah. Okay. yeah, no, it's when Simon point. was doing some research into doing an article uh, about Churchill, he got in contact with the previous importer at the time for the Romeo and Juliet brand, and, uh, and he communicated or, uh, that the name Churchill was first used on a cigar, when uh, um, one of the retailers in London, back then it was called Robert Lewis, now it's JJ Fox, the proprietors of of, uh, of that shop asked permission, asked the permission from the Soames family to use the Churchill name on uh, uh, on the cigar. And this and was the, after Churchill would have passed. Yes, and so this was the cigar that they chose. It was the seven by forty-seven, and that's when they started using Churchill. Um, so actually, you can the the, the actual name term Churchill. Was was re, was uh, um, you can trace back to to London as well or to the UK. So. And then we have our connection with Churchill because our painting <laughs> was was painted by Churchill's granddaughter. Oh, was it really? Oh, commissioned wow. by we commissioned her wow. to make a painting. So we we say we have a little bit of Churchill in the room, and and there is the Romeo and Juliet of Churchill box in the middle of the picture. Wow. Yeah. And this is a I mean a proper you know cigar. I mean it's an after dinner cigar. It it's is. a cigar meant to be enjoyed. And it epitomizes all these virtues of uh, a cigar, which is a commitment to time. You can't rush this. No. No. It's to be, you know, sat and enjoyed. Uh, and again, the length, you know, allows this, as you spoke about, Anna, this incredible kind of cascade and evolution of flavors, you know, throughout the smoke um, that makes it, you know, dynamic and interesting and yeah. just kind of a natural wonder in many ways, you know, as one smokes through it. It's beautiful. And then, of course, the Kappa 50. I mean, it's a true embellishment. I mean, this is very exciting. I think we need to do the Don Candito box of 100 next. Is that? <laughs> 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 Edward Sahakian uh, apparently still well, has some. <laughs> I, I, he does indeed. Um, he does indeed. I've seen them. 
Um, so what about this particular blend? So, uh, you know, going back to the regional program, I would imagine internally you're the ones, you know, basically petitioning Havanos to do this particular brand in this particular format. And then do they come back and present a selection of blends from which you choose, or are you sending kind of tasting notes to say this is what we have in mind, or do you just allow the master blender to do his magic? Well, the, the process of a new product in Cuba is uh, conducted by the Comisión Nacional de Degustación, I mean, the National Commission of Testing that uh, belong to the Tabacuba, Cuba, the Cuban industry. And uh, usually when uh, Habanos proposed a new size, it could be a size that is designed by Habanos or by the distributors, the uh, master blender in the headquarter of the that brand, I mean, for example, the Porla Rañaga, the headquarter for that brand is the Corona factory. Okay. So the master blender of the Corona factory will produce uh, one or two blends according with the size and according, of course, with the mm -hmm. uh, flavor profile of the brand. We'll produce one or two uh, different proposals that will be tested by that Commission Nacional. That is compounded by about uh, 50 people that uh, belong to the uh, different factories. Okay. I mean, in each of the factories, uh, you will find a tester panel mm -hmm. that every day they have that job of testing the cigars and maintain the consistency of the blend. And those people, plus um, sommeliers, uh, Habano sommeliers that are invited to be part of that commission, uh, experts from Habanos uh, will taste those blends and will compare with the profile of the brand. And based on that, they will choose the uh, blend that should be in that particular product. But in the case of the United Kingdom, in one way or other, always we have been part of that uh, process because they very gently have access to always send to us a prototype and uh, receive the opinion of the market because always the market has certain uh, profile flavor also. And also we have been in the lucky position that on occasion we will be planning a trip to Cuba and the, the tasting panels often take part at a certain time of year. So we have requested permission and been granted the privilege of attending those panels. So these panels are actual kind of events, right? They happen in a, I mean, the ones Very that I've been In matter. September, October, every year, yeah. all the cigars that will be released the, following the year. next year will be testing during yeah. two months uh, by diet commission. And on some occasion, as Gemma said, well. We've been there. Well, and, and it'll be in a, in a hotel or around a cabal, the smooth pool. You know, it's like oh, it's wonderful because <laughs> the, the cigars come out, they've got a code on them, You've got your tasting sheet. You've got a table with every factory represented with their panel, quite often wearing the emblem of their factory. So there's a little bit of kind of rivalry, yeah. jostling going on. <laughs> Nobody knows which factory made that cigar, mm -hmm. who was responsible for the production. And at the end of the smoking of two different cigars with two different codes, the, the person in charge of the panel will say, right, we're all going to talk about the cigar with the letter three in your Okay, code. so unbanded... Unbanned, I mean, except unbanded, except for a number, yeah. except for so a number. So nobody knows if it's a no idea. Boulevard no or idea. Or and then the conversation is very specific. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's about is it light, medium, strong? How is the construction? What is the draw? What is the appearance? It's not about people's personal opinions. Do you like this? Do you not like this? Mm -hmm. It's kept very narrow mm -hmm. so that the, the comments really do follow a line to a lead the, the panels mm -hmm. to come to a conclusion that yes, it meets the criteria for that brand. For that and then brand at the end, factory. you might be told what it is and you might not. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. it's been an absolutely extraordinary we, um, thing to yeah, be part of. And we kind of recreated that here one year, uh, or a few years, but one year where we had, uh, they'd sent over the, the two cigars, A and B or one and two, and we all 
we invited some. some we lived with which Lorena, one was for yeah, example. Yeah, Lorena. Lorena, yeah. We invite, we... Lorena was a two year, yeah. I mean, two plus year. Well, that was year exciting. Process. We were all sitting around in the old boardroom, not yeah. the, the, this one. And El Laguito was... had never made a, yeah. a regional before. So yeah. once it was designated, a, a cigar is designated to a factory, not only by its brand, but by the size. Yeah. So there is only one factory in Cuba that makes the Ligito number one. Yeah. So La Reina production was designated to the Cohiba factory. So blended by the parent for, for El Rey Special Mundo. privilege. Yeah, well, we only we, to we believe it's the only regional edition ever to have been made. It is. It's been produced in the Laguito factory. But as a result, the El Laguito team, who we have known for many years, yeah. were really excited about producing a regional. Mm. They'd never done a regional. They didn't, they didn't, didn't, they didn't have the the history of having to produce them every year. We had this wonderful two-year process with the factory and the people and the rollers and the blender and the whole team. We went backwards and forwards. They sent us prototypes. I mean, that was a, was a phenomenal was experience. I said, oh, it's, no, it's not going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Luckily, Gemma insisted. And, uh, it well, was one it of was our the most year to take a risk. Popular, because, one of yeah. our most popular regional editions to yeah. date. So, I mean, when that came out, I mean, I was just awestruck. Well, it was all about the quality of the production, mm. that cigar. I mean, yes, there was an idea behind it, but it came down to the tobacco that was selected, the wrappers that were selected, and the fact that the team that rolled that cigar was absolutely minuscule. Yeah. So the production for them became a point Probably two of or such three people. Right? Uh, it really was. It really was. Um, and you still go back and you see those you know, yes. you see the same people. The and you, I mean, it's... Actually, you know, looking back now, it would have been great to have for this year's regional edition, obviously, El Rey de Mundo, King of the World, La Reina, the Queen, given yeah. the coronation tomorrow, is it? Yes, tomorrow. Well, we'll all, so. I'm going to smoke a La Reina You're going to smoke a La Reina tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good idea. Wow, what, a, what an incredible occasion on which to smoke it. Well, what's your experience of the cigar so far, Kirby? I mean, one of the things I love is once the tobacco has an opportunity to warm, you know, through the entire cigar, you get through that first, third... You really begin to experience the beauty of the blend, and uh, you know it's it's smooth. Um, it almost has a light creaminess to it. I mean, yes, very nice. With a coffee, with it would be perfect because in Cuba we always combine tobacco. We call it a cigar a tobacco, tobacco we say, and with a coffee, perfect. That is the best combination for Cuban. Cuban coffee, coffee, espresso way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Very, and a, and a cigar. And I think in this part, uh, in the second third, the cigar is so creamy, so nice, that will be perfect with a, with a coffee after nice lunch. It's such a balanced such cigar. Such a balanced cigar. It's yeah. really, really no, lovely. I'm very excited really, about this. Very, I'm very excited very about this cigar. I'm more excited about the aging of this cigar oh. because I'm sure that after five, 10 years, that would be something like the Por la Rañaga Magnifico, something that will be very, very mm. exciting. Well, it's so clear just how much pride and effort that you all put into the regionals. And again, some of, I mean, all of the regionals to come out of Hunters and Francao of the UK market have just been exceptional in every way. And it's amazing that across, you know, what's now been, what, 15 pushing 20 years, that you're able to do it time and time again, year after year, doing something different, but exceptional. And so, Gemma, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, to be here smoking this in your company for the first time, I mean, it's really such a privilege and an honor. And I can't tell you, again, how much I enjoy this, uh, this opportunity. So, Well, it's a treat for us to have you here always. And I'm absolutely delighted that we managed to do this today. Well, thank you for making time. No, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And, and thank you for coming, as I said. And, and thank you for your kind words about our regional editions. I think you, um, you know, I think you really recognize how we feel about them. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And, and that's, that's really, it means a great deal to us. Yeah. So thank you. Well, the pride is, you know, again, so integral to the cigar. And you know, we had the privilege of being in Cuba together, you know, just recently. Uh, to be quite honest. And these cigars to come out of Cuba are such a representation of the people of Cuba. I mean, everything that goes in there, you speak of the pride. Uh, but looking at the regionals, that pride and that influence is extended 
to the market and to the distributors that play a role in the development of these. So, you know, not only is this an incredible and beautiful poetic representation of the Cuban people, but this is such an incredible and poetic representation of you know, Gemma, Hunters and Francao, you know, Anna, Sean, the entire team here, the retailers and ultimately the market and smokers that, you know, all contribute and influence this outcome. So this is, you know, a privilege. I mean, a cabinet of 50. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I just, again, is so exciting. It's a cabinet of 38 at the moment. Yes, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah. Point, point taken, yeah. <laughs> A lot of testing. But the, the beauty is, is we still have over half that box left. Mm, mm. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope you'll take some with you. So oh, you, can, well. you can watch it evolve until yeah. we release it. You know, I'm going to uh, have to start, uh, you know, you know, posturing tomorrow with uh, twisting arms of, wow. you know, amongst the Sahakians to make sure I end up on the list of those privileged enough for the opportunity to acquire a box. And again, I think amongst the retailers, I mean, they really also take seriously um, you know, their process of putting these into the right hands. Well, in this occasion, even the Sahakian has not tasted this cigar. Ah. So oh, we will okay. Be first and, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gemma, thank you so much. Thank you. And I mean, this is uh, such a privilege. It's a pinnacle moment. So thank you. Mm -hmm.